right, we want to demonstrate an update for edge patches and where the workflow is at this moment. Um, disclaimer, there probably will be a crash um, during this demonstration. It happens due to the solver software that's actually solving in the background. So there's nothing I can do about it. And until we get that stable, that's going to be a big, big hang up. But without further ado, so we start off with the brush size that's going to control how big the quads are along each edge. And I'll just start by kind of drawing what seems natural, like a patch network. Kind of outlining some contours. And at this point, um, the patches aren't live. It doesn't try to solve them until you tell it to. It's just kind of for speed's sake. And also until I figure out that issue with crashing, I'd like to be able to edit some things without it trying to solve every patch it sees. So um, once I get this first area around the mouth and nose here laid out, um, I'll turn on the, the solver. Okay, so um, just take a quick look and try to see if this kind of makes sense. Um, the quad size here looks a little big, so I'll turn that down. Um, seven and seven, I kind of like even numbers. The patch boundaries need to sum to be even. That's the only um, big constraint with this algorithm. Um, so it's fine to have two odd numbers in a patch um, as long as the total sum is even. So let's start, this should be interesting, a five here, five. So we'll hit P, that turns the patches live. Um, the first solution it finds, it puts in there. And if we're gonna get a crash, it, it will be soon. But it looks like we're gonna get away with this particular set of numbers. And now I'll demonstrate how we can start to move poles around simply by playing with the boundaries. Um, you know, The next big step for this is gonna be having poles and parameters be editable in some kind of intuitive way. Um, but for now, let's just demonstrate what we can do just with a little massaging of the boundaries. Okay, so let's say we wanted another edge loop to fully, I mean face loop, to fully wrap around the mouth here. Um, we'll start with this patch right here, and let's look at where the information that we would like, or the flow that we would like to go around the mouth is actually going. So this flow here, which we'd like to continue to bend around, is going straight down to this side. So one way to force more flow around here is to decrease the subdivision on the side that the flow is going to. So we'll do that right now. And sure enough, that ends up forcing the other loop there. Um, This looks kind of nice, actually. There's one loop going up around the nose and two going around the mouth, one going down to the lower jawline, and then one continuing up the face, which is kind of that natural flow that we started out drawing. Okay, so let's finish our nose here, this five-sided patch. And that was also convenient that these two sides ended up being odd. Um, I don't really like the position of this pole. So if we wanted to try and push this pole further in, or I'd like it to be further down, how would we do that? We need one, let's try a different pattern. By hitting Z, it'll randomly scroll through different solutions. Okay, let's actually decrease that. Increase that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's like that looks a little better. That hides the pole right here. Now you'll notice that um, sometimes, so this this pattern is va this patch is valid five three four four four, so this sums to be even. Occasionally, if you um, change the subdivision, what it will do is it will do the maximum padding on each side and then not fill in the patch. So I plan to leave that as an option to the user that we can partially fill patches that are invalid, like this one. So by you know, making two slices here, two slices here, and two slices there, um, we are able to, to fill this, but leaving a triangle here. So I'd like to leave that to the user if they want to do that and just flag this patch as invalid with like orange. Because um, even though that's not um, an all quad patch, um, it still might be useful. And so I'll finish this demonstration up by just drawing a few more really know exactly how I want to fill that in here. That's more for the topology experts to do. I'll just try my best as a humble programmer. And we don't have T-junctions set up in no T-junctions set up yet, but that will come soon enough. 